What's up everybody? Danny Rock City. Thanks for checking in on a new episode. We are headed out on a weekend overland trip. We're headed all the way out to Arizona. I have some new gear to share with you guys and some of the sights and sounds and views of Arizona. Ooh. We are about halfway to our destination. We are currently in Needles, California. I did meet up with these guys back here. We got Dirt Wagon and we have Trail Trek in the corner over there. Once we get filled up, we'll be on our way and next stop will be Arizona. What is up guys? Uh, we are now in Flagstaff. We were on the road for maybe six, seven hours with a couple pit stops along the way. We are just kind of getting some last minute supplies and then we are headed to our campsite. Between the last trip and this trip, I upgraded a bunch of new gear and so a lot of it is consolidated and there was a lot less stuff to pack so I couldn't help but feel like I was forgetting something. But hopefully we got everything we need. I'm looking forward to sharing the new gear and showing you the different equipment that we will be using this weekend. Anyways, I will check in with you guys at the campsite so I'll see you in, in a bit. All right guys, and so we're here. As you can see that we have a beautiful view at our camp spot. Five o'clock now, starting to get ready, setting up camp. Uh, we got here a little later than we thought. I'm sorry that I'm kind of uh, backlit right now. Uh, one of the new pieces of equipment that I'm excited to show you guys is this bad boy right here. It's gazelle tent. And so it's gonna be my first time using it. First time setting it up, but from my understanding, it should be super simple and I should be able to get it all set up in under two minutes. So let's put that to the test. As you saw, this thing was super easy to pop up. That was legit my first time using it. I just pulled it out of the bag. Justin brought it to Arizona for me. So um, you'll there was a plug at the top, plug at the top that you pull up, and then on each of the four sides, you just pull this out and it pops open. As you can see, there's some skeleton on the inside. All of that just pops out, and it's super spacious. You have windows in here. You have two doors. Um, the whole top is open if you don't use the rain fly and then you have all these pouches and so this is my queen size air mattress that I mentioned in my Monachi video and as you can see I just threw it in there right now but you can see there's still a lot plenty of space even with the queen size mattress in there so I'll be able to put most of my gear in here so what do you guys think do you guys rock a gazelle or what kind of tent do you guys use let me know in the comments below 
So I pretty much have camp set up. Let me show you a little bit around the place. I have my Vacation for Life double hammock set up right here. I decided to bring the water port today. Here's this guy going. I decided to bring the water port for this trip because uh, we're gonna be here a couple extra days compared to the last trip. Here's the gazelle tent I had shown you guys how to set up earlier. This is, should be familiar if you've checked out the other video. My five foot roam awning. I have the Harbor Freight rope light hooked up to a battery pack. Table here, the rigid carrier for the spare tire. I'll go into this in a little more detail tomorrow most likely. The Rock Pals fridge set up here. I have it plugged into my my secondary battery which is a jackery 240 since this one's a little smaller i have i designated this as my secondary this one was the one that was intended to run the things like the lights and inflate the air mattress and things like that but for now we'll have it running the fridge overnight until we get some more sunlight back out and then we'll recharge it these are the two solar panels that we'll be testing out this weekend. I don't know if that'll be part of this video or it'll be a separate video altogether, but this one is the 60 watt Rock Pals and this is the 100 watt Rock Pals. And that's pretty much it. Um, what do you guys think of the camp setup? Let me know um, if there's anything you guys would change or if there's any recommendations that you would have. And the sun's going down, so let's go check out this view again. It's the rest of the boys. We got Fred doing his thing, getting those fire shots. You'll probably see this on the gram over the next few weeks. You got Justin back there doing his thing with the drone. What's up, guys? What's up, G? Look at that view. Hopefully, he'll share some of that footage and we can give you guys an aerial of this area. about nine o'clock now and I'm just checking in on the rock pals and the battery I'm at 98 percent the most important part is to see if it actually stayed cold so let's see if that happened stayed cold not frozen so I'm just gonna go ahead and crank this a little more not be as conservative now that I know that it's 98 percent for those of you who are new to outdoor and adventure life some pro tips that you could use with you on your next camping trip one of the basic essentials that you'll need is a headlamp or a flashlight obviously one of the features you want to look for is actually a red light feature what the red light does is allows you to still illuminate enough in front of you to see what you need to see without using a white light that is harsher to the eyes and so since it's harsher on the eyes too if you're with a group of people if you're talking to them with a white light on, as you can see, it blows out the screen a lot more. You, and imagine if we were face to face now and I just had white light shining in your eyes versus something like a red light. If you see how my face is not as blown out, you can see me a little bit more because the light is not as harsh on the camera lens even. Walking back to camp, as you can see, I have a light right there and this is so i know where my campsite is and i'm not walking aimlessly in the dark as you guys saw earlier i was running the rope lights and i had that illuminating the camp spot but since we weren't actively using our camp spot i didn't want to keep running the lights and wasting energy out of my battery back but i still wanted to be able to mark where the campsite was and navigate in the dark and so what i used here also from Harbor Freight. Um, sh at this point, it's always feel like a lot of my videos. Uh, I'm using gear from Harbor Freight, but it works. Um, and I'm trying to keep uh, and focus more on being able to be out and doing the adventure versus the kind of the how much I'm spending on my gear. Anyways, these are those free LED lights that you get with any purchase um, from Harbor Freight, and they usually will have these as an ad. I try to pick one up whenever I can and they're very versatile but in this case the way I use this is I'll open up the hook and I'll hang it from somewhere like the awning so that I know where my campsite is. In my last video I mentioned chem lights 
Um, and that is the same concept where you can break them and you can hang them. Time is it? it is 11 o'clock. About to go to bed and first night in this gazelle. And I must say, it feels like I checked into a hotel for the night. So much space, so much room for activities. I could even picture myself carrying a storage tote, like the one that I keep all my gear in now. Put it in the corner as a nightstand. Since that's Alpha's first night in this thing too, um, he's definitely still very curious. Um, he was not, he was pretty tired not too long ago. And now he's uh, tripping out on being inside the gazelle. All right guys, 7 a.m. I've had the Rock Pals fridge running overnight the entire time. And out of the 240, the Jackery 240, still got 4% left. Uh, let's see what the stuff inside looks like. Everything seems nice and cold. And so today, I'll probably run this shortly. I'll probably run it on the other battery shortly. And then we'll plug this into the Rock Pals solar panels that I brought and try to recharge this throughout the day and see how long that takes. So one of my other pieces of favorite Amazon Overland gear is this fire maple stove. It is essentially a knockoff of the jet boil. I even have a jet boil fuel canister on this one, but these things are super convenient. I paid about 45, maybe $50 for this one. If you never used one of these before, it has like a self-contained um, hot burner down there so as you can see let me get you a better angle give it some gas hear that and then it's got a self igniter and then it should boil the water in a couple minutes so I'm gonna make some coffee and uh, get the morning started all right I'm gonna start preparing some breakfast a little pro tip for anybody who uses these single burners here what I've done with mine, as you can see over here, there's a little bit of a breeze going on, is I bought this splatter guard on Amazon. This costs about 10 bucks. These are to prevent uh, splatter when you're frying things. But what it actually helps with as well is as a wind guard, as you can see, it's keeping the wind out and it folds up nice and small to go back into the box with the burner so you can store it with it at all times. So, unexpected turn of events. I was trying to make breakfast, and then the camp next to us, one of their buddies collapsed. Paramedics made it to our campsite, and they're working at him now. The first aid kit is good to go, but you need to know how to use it and be able to administer first aid. It can prevent a huge emergency like the one that is currently happening now. All right, guys, so it's a little past 6.30 in the evening now. Sun's starting to go down. Let me see if I can get that focused for you. Probably now. There it is. So there's the campsite. And so before we lost light completely, uh, I'm gonna bring this tire carrier back down. I actually put it back up to take some quick pictures. Now I'm back at the campsite. First thing you're gonna do is remove this cotter pin right here. All right, make sure you keep track of where this is um, so you don't lose it. From there, you'll go ahead and pull the hitch pin. Alright, so that's out. And then on this side, while supporting the weight of the wheel, you'll pull this lever up and then you'll be able to carefully bring down the wheel. So there you go, now it's off. And then you can slowly take it down and there it is. It's out of the way. As you can see, super simple, no additional tools necessary to make this happen and be able to carry the full size spare with you. Hey boy, ready to go home? Or you wanna stay here? All right, good morning everybody. This is the last stay here at camp. We're packing up and heading out today. Had another wonderful night's sleep in the gazelle. I'll probably do a more in-depth video for you guys down the line, but initial impressions is uh, very impressed, highly recommended if you're in the market for a new tent. After all the stuff that went on with the uh, neighboring camp yesterday, we just kind of hung out and stayed here at camp. I was able to test out the solar panels and refill the batteries. I got uh, the 
a small 240 jack reed back up to 100% in about four hours with the 100 watt panel. And so if you do want to see a more in-depth video of that whole setup and how that solar panel and how recharging with the solar panel works and all of that, let me know in the comments below and I'll, I will put that on my list of videos to show you guys. I'll be probably squeezing in some footage right now of me breaking down the gazelle and breaking down the campsite. There it is. It's like magic, huh, Alpha? Where did the tent go? Where did the tent go? So one thing to consider with this gazelle for all of the praise I've been giving it on this trip is its condensed footprint is definitely a lot bigger than your standard dome tent or backpack tent. The space I have up here on the top of my Prince U is was originally designated for bringing my pop-up canopy. And as you can see, the gazelle is about the same size as a your standard pop-up canopy and that's what i have in here today and that's one of the reasons i didn't bring the pop-up canopy with us this for this trip because i knew that i have to be bringing this back with me since i had it shipped directly to justin's and he brought it to camp with us here's the top of my rack got up here using the rhino fit ladder so for those of you who ask what the point of having the ladder is it definitely helps to get up onto the rack, especially if you have something like a Prince Hu or a front runner, so that you can make sure all your gear is tied down and secured properly. And there's our trip. I hope you guys enjoyed this weekend overland to Flagstaff, Arizona. This is Danny Rock City checking out. I'll see you guys in the next one.